Hi, my name is Noel Davis with World Composting, and today we're going to take a look at our urban worm bag that has the European night crawlers in it. So this is the version 2.0, has a little bit better bottom on it. We're not going to do a harvest this time. I was thinking about it, but I think we're going to make one more cycle of food before we do a harvest. And it has been 18 days since our last update. So we're kind of shrinking this window down. Before we were like four weeks, and then we we're down to three weeks, and now it's down to 18 days. We're going to see how much food they've gone through. And we're still going to add a fairly large feeding. We're going to continue to do this, and this is going to help build up that worm population and build up that microbial activity that they need to be able to survive in this system. So with that, let's go take a look at the system and see how it's doing and see how much food we're going to add. And we're going to kind of base it on how much is left in there. If there's a lot left, well, maybe we'll only put in one container. If there's little left, maybe we'll add two and a half containers. So we'll see, but let's go take a look, see how the system is doing, and see how these worms look. All right, here we are at our urban worm bag. Let's open this up and take a look and see how things are inside. As I said, it's been 18 days. First off, a lot of moisture on the lid here, it looks like, um, compared to where we've just checked it before. And we've got our little trap in here. Oh, there's a couple fruit flies this time, or fungus gnats, I'm not sure which, coming out of here. So it looks like we might have a little bit, a little bit of something that got in here, but that's okay. It happens. Got him. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and dig in here and see how things are doing. Just a reminder, also, if you're looking to purchase one of these, I do have links down below for an urban worm bag and the verma bags and along a lot of my other stuff. If you look down in the description. So let's just dig down in here. First off, we've got our avocado shells, which take a long time to break down. Got two of those. Remember, we're not trying to really stir this up quite as much. And here's another avocado shell here. And it looks like, I think those, I don't think this is, um, if you can see those white dots on there, I do not think that, those are mites of some sort and not uh, some of the other things that I've had in here in the past. So I've had red mites, but those look, those don't look like, uh, normally when I see white powder like this or white dots, I would think that it's crushed crab or eggshell, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's some sort of mite or something that's growing on there or laid eggs on there of some sort. Still have our corn cobs in here, unsurprising. Those take a while to break down. More avocado shells. Those do take a long time. So we put in a lot of stuff that takes a little bit longer to break down. Let's just go through this top layer a little bit. Just kind of take a look in here. Got a avocado seed. Looks like that is starting to break down a little bit. Let me just zoom in just a little bit more here. There we go. No reason to be so far away. Hopefully the lighting is still good. So as you can see, we still have some stuff left in here from last time. Again, these coffee ground bags, sometimes they don't break open right away. But overall, just dig over here. We put in a lot of stuff last time. Up here we go. We've got a tea bag here. The bag is gone. The label is still there, but those labels will also disappear. Again, more coffee grounds in here that are still being broken down. Other than that, that looks like that's all gone too. Let's go over to this side. Again, we've got our corn on the cob here, or our cob that's left over. There's no really corn, it's just the cob. But again, that's left over. We've got a piece of cob peel right there. Some more coffee grounds. I knew the, those just got to break them open before they'll really work on them. Another corn on the cob there. Looks like a piece of apple, maybe? I'm not sure what that is really. I think it's an apple. More corn here. Again, that'll, that's going to take a while. We've got some of our husk here from the corn. Again, that also is going to take a while to break down. I'll throw those shells over there. And we have a little bit more food over here. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like that's sort of mixed in with food. We've got another avocado shell. It smells a little citrusy over here. So I might have had some, might have been a clementine peel on the back side of this. Not seeing as many worms this time. I don't know if we need to dig down a little deeper. Let's just see if we can dig down a little deeper here, see if we can see. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Nice big helping of worms. They're just a little further down in the bin. They look nice and healthy though. They're really chewing through this stuff. Almost all the food is gone except for these really, these things just take a while to break down. And they are loaded with worms inside. Let's see if I can open this one up here. You can see that the worms are kind of crawling inside here. They're getting in, they're eating it apart from the inside. Very normal for them to do that. So, 
they just take a while to break down but this is overall this is looking really really good you know again another bag of coffee grounds there that need to be broken up let's take a look at the center section here I mean, most of it's just paper it looks like but as you can see there's still tons of worms in there they're looking good they're doing a great job in this system I'm sure they're increasing in number as well so this is looking still really good and most of the food except for these really hard to to digest things that just take longer the, everything else is gone um, so I'm, I think this is ready for more food I think we should try to cut back on maybe the corn cobs which I don't have any of those for won't have any of those for a while um, and also the avocado peels maybe just a little bit let's make sure we get all these coffee grounds out of these bags and I think we're ready for some more so this is pretty well covered I don't see worms on top let me just move that guy over there and we're going to go ahead and dump in our normal complement of food I think right on top here so let me grab that and actually before we do that we're going to put in some crushed crab and eggshell on the bottom here I'm going to put a mask on while I'm doing this you should wear a mask while working with crab and eggshell you don't want to be breathing this stuff in so I've got a nice tight fitting mask on and here we go we're going to put on quite a bit here I do find that this helps with just a lot of stuff because they, the worms need that grit there we go kind of holds on a little better when things are wet and now we're going to go ahead and cover that up with some food we're going to put in two containers of food not the two and a half like I was originally maybe thinking and we'll go from there so this was not a full bin let me get the ice out of there but uh, we've got a couple hard things in here we've got this stem got some asparagus there we go all right let's break this apart and just so you know I haven't tried to leave these open but they just tend to close when they freeze um, you know I, I throw stuff in here slowly and they do just seem to kind of close down as they're uh, as they're in here Come on now, break apart. There we go. Again, lots of banana peels. Some celery, apple. As you know, we go through a lot of banana in this house. Typically make shakes once or twice a week. And the other big thing that we have a lot of is carrots. There we go. Just use the side of this bin. And as I was saying before, just a reminder, I do have links to this stuff down below for any of the things that you've watched in my system. There's a bug climbing on the side right there. That was definitely a fruit fly, it looked like. All right. There's our first one. That is not enough for this system. I know that. So we're going to go ahead and add a second one. This one has quite a bit more in it. I'll just scrape off some of this ice that's on here. Now I'm really trying to build these systems up to also just process a lot of food. I'm actually more avocado shells. Oh well, there goes our no avocado shell this time. This is a full apple right here. Um, this one was probably bad, but uh, I'm, I'm really trying to build this up to a system that can really handle some food because I'm backing up with too much food in my house. And my freezer and stuff like that. All right, this is great right here. Got some carrots. That should go really, really quick. Got some orange peels or coming time peels. Of course, banana and more coffee grounds. So we'll just spread this stuff around. Don't want everything piled in one spot. Nice and spread around so that way they have a lot of surface area. I'm debating. I don't know whether I should add a, just a little bit more or not. I think I might. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more because these guys have been going through food so quickly. I've got one of my half containers here. We're going to go ahead and add that in as well. If I can get it out. There we go. Now while this stuff is all frozen, I did let this sit out for about a half an hour and kind of thaw out. So it's not quite as frozen as it can be. But it still is frozen, especially in the center sections, because it obviously takes a little longer to get down that area. 
but the next part of this is that we're going to add, I think, a little bit more crushed crab and eggshell. Make sure this is all spread out nicely. There we go. I don't want too much in one section. Now, one of the great things about putting the crab, crab and eggshell down first is the fact that you kind of see it, but we're going to put a little bit more. I really want a lot of grit in this system. This is great for the garden and the yard afterwards to have this uh, calcium and, and everything for the, the critters in the yard. And now the last part we're going to add to this is, of course, our paper bedding. And I've already had this sitting here soaking. Hopefully you can see that. I just got to mix it in here a little bit more, I think. Not all of it got wet. So it's going to kind of move some of this through the moisture that's in here. And as we're doing that, I'm just going to drip, drop it in here. Now I have to say, these, using these large containers to, to kind of get the paper bedding wet has been working really well. Um, I didn't do this in the past. I'd always spray stuff down as after I put it in the system to kind of dry things out. But uh, lately my systems have been a little bit more dry. So that's where I'm really trying to wet the paper beforehand to make sure it's not too dry. This is doing a really good job though with this, uh, this container, water in it. Get to move around all the paper bedding, get it all nice and wet. You can always add more dry paper on top if you need it. When we get to this bottom section, it's really damp. All right, let's just scrape out the last of this here. Only a little bit more left in here. I might have to add a little bit more to this system. They are moving through the paper, it feels like, a lot faster as well since I've been doing this. I've been adding paper almost every time. And it feels like that there's a layer of paper on top still when I open it up, but it's not nearly as bad as it was before where they were going through paper sort of slowly. So we're gonna add some more paper in here just to kind of make sure we cover everything. This is gonna be dry this time. And this water that I'm using does have um, BTI mix in it. So as I said, I'm just adding a little bit of dry stuff just to make sure it's all covered. A little bit more right here. There we go. And we can always spray this down as well just to make sure it's a little bit damp. We can do that. Let me grab my sprayer. And what I'm trying to do this, I always try to keep everything right nearby in case I need it. So I've got my sprayer right here. And just kind of wet this down just a little bit on the top. I'm not looking to saturate it, just get it a little damp so it kind of holds down a little better, doesn't move around as much. The worms aren't going to be up here for a little bit anyhow. All right, and for the last piece we're gonna put in, now, I had this container in here. This one looks like it's pretty well done for a fruit fly trap. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one out. I have a fresher one right here that has a lot more liquid left in it and a lot more life. And we're gonna go ahead and put that on this corner right over here. Now we fed the entire top, so I wanna make sure it's leaning off to the side so it doesn't fall over inside. And that's our update for our urban worm bag. Again, please remember that I do have links to all this stuff down below. Um, where I should just say I have a link to a site which you can get all this stuff if you just click on the links down there you can find them uh, Urban Worm Bag or Worms or even uh, items on Amazon. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions please let me know and let me know what you think about this system and how it's going so far. Thank you for watching.